But I came to be involved in Turner and Hooch in a, uh, an odd way, unusual for movies. They were already making it. They'd been making it for three weeks with a, another director, a very nice man. But they'd got sort of stuck and they were reshooting their reshoots and they got desperate and they decided to stop and they looked around for someone else. And uh, suddenly I got a call to come in and uh, I did nothing, in fact, except take the lens cap off each day and enjoy watching Tom, who was brilliant, and, and the dog, who was also brilliant, had been wonderfully trained. Hooch, the four hooches, all four hooches. Oh, the, the, it, the dog Bordeaux is a wonderful breed of dogs. They're very terrific. They, they're family dogs. They look after you. They protect you. They love you intensely. They have one small problem, which we do look at in the film, and that is that they slobber enormously. But other than that, they're brave, they fight for you, they love you, they look after you, they, you know, they, will, they die very young, but they, they, they are the best friend. They're very, very nice, but they do slobber. We have a scene in the film where uh, Tom and, the, and Hooch are on stakeout all night watching a place, and I decided that they would just have to improvise this. There's not a lot you can, you can't give the Hooch the script. The script wasn't very good, you know, not very good at reading, but... Um, so we shot it continuously with four cameras that had different amounts of film in them when we started so that they always ran out of film uh, in different places. So there was always two cameras going. And we ran for an hour or two and Tom kept giving Hooch a little bit more food and talking to him and Hooch reacted and so forth. And Hooch was getting his own close-ups. He was great. But he was slobbering. Tom was not, but the Hooch was slobbering. And we found after about an hour of shooting, uh, this car they were sitting in, which was a promotional car, brand new car we had, the seat had somehow eroded. Even in, in that short period of time, the slobber, there was so much slobber on Hooch's seat that uh, he was sort of sinking into the seat. We had to cut and um, replace the seat after just one hour, and, and then we could continue, it was all fine. And then Hooch numbers one and two um, did all the film. So it wasn't all one dog? It was two, you see two dogs all the time, and for these stunt, these runs and, and the jumps, there's a third dog. But for two dogs to do what these dogs did was a remark, and they were incredibly well trained and, and uh, unusually trained because often the trainer is just off camera and is the dog is always looking at the trainer and the camera's arranged so you can't see that the dog is not looking at the person he's communicating with, he's actually looking at the trainer. But in this case, the trainer uh, taught Hooch, both Hooches, to look at the person who had the little clicker that made the noise. And so before every, every take, the trainer would give Tom Hanks the, the little clicker, and Tom would click, make the click, and the dog would look at him. And from then on, until he handed the clicker back, that was the only person Hooch was interested in. Tom was the only person. And so Tom had this amazing relationship uh, with both hooches. I mean, I shouldn't say both. There's, they became one hooch. Watching Tom and, and, and this dog was a constant pleasure. I can't remember any sort of strange things, although there were loads of them. A hooch did everything. He demolished the kitchen. He demolished. He, he was so well trained. He was, and he seemed to be having fun doing it. And demolished Tom's house. We actually made him a very nice apartment. And Hooch came in and completely wrecked it. In the original script and in the film we shot, uh, Hooch dies, just as he does in the movie. And um, we finished the film and uh, people liked it. Um, and we had a preview and it was rather, you know, it was very nice, everyone loved it. And, uh, and Katz, Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, who, um, who was the head of the studio, said, look, look guys, you know, let's shoot a little bit more each weekend, anything we can think of. And about the third weekend, he said, what would happen if Hooch lived? Do you think that'd be worth trying? And we all said, well, yeah, let's, let's try it. So we, we came up with a little scene of Hooch lives. We shot it that weekend. We previewed it the next weekend. And we previewed it at the same time in two theaters, or five minutes apart, in Encino, and tested the audience and things. And it, they both did incredibly well. And the audience response was almost exactly the same. By a tiny margin, people preferred dot Hooch dying at least in this preview. So Katzenberg uh, came up to me afterwards. He said, well, look, there's nothing in the statistics, so you decide. It was very generous of him because I didn't have the fine cut, and I was this director they brought on late. Um, but anyway, so I, I thought about it for a day, 
I didn't really want to make the decision. And I talked to the writer and the producers, great, and we decided anyway that we should leave, leave it the way it was, that Hooch died. Well, I remember coming back to England and people, friends and neighbors and these knew that I'd done this film and it had now come out in England and people would come up to me in the street and normally they would say, oh, hi, Roger, you're back. And now when I came back, they didn't say that. They said, how could you do it? Why would you do it? Why, how would anyone kill the dog? About halfway through the shoot, uh, Lily comes to my daughter, Lily. She's, I think, three at the time. And um, of course, wants to meet Hooch. And I'm a little nervous because Hooch is great and I'm sure wonderful with children, but this is the first child. And it's my child that uh, he's now, uh, in my presence anyway. And anyway, it actually went terribly well, except that Hooch, when you, if you, when you see the picture, Hooch's head is bigger than her head, and one mouthful is all it would have taken. When we went to previews of the film and, and screenings and publicity, Hooch had it in his contract that he would have his own Learjet, which was fine. I mean, he didn't like to travel in the hold of planes and things, so they got his own Learjet, and this worked perfectly well for the first two or three flights, uh, until on one flight, which, where the weather turned bad, and Hooch wasn't wearing his safety belt, it didn't fit. And the pilots completely freaked out. Not that Hooch did anything wrong, but they were, they were in this little lift and it was this huge dog, and it was starting to bounce. And Hooch apparently was looking not pleased with the situation, and he was not strapped down. And the pilots said, oh no, my God, and they dove down. They went, anyway, they, they didn't want to fly Hooch after that, but it was not Hooch's fault. Okay, brilliant. Thank you.